And hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 171 of Trials and Trebuchets. I am your dungeon master, Luke, and joining me are my players whose names are... Hello, I am em I am an employee of Crow Mercantile temporarily, <laughs> and I play the level 9 gnome wizard, Windsor Wallaby, <laughs> along with his cuddly little companion, Mr. Wiggles. Meow. Hello! Can you please send the package all the way to here? It's me, Carla, and I play Integrity Addleberry, the level nine tiefling roguelock who is orange with a horn, Ho two horns. Only one uh, horn now. <laughs> if Troil was fondue, I'd like to dip my fruit in all of the chocolate fountains. Nice. Because I want to try all oh, of the <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, and I play Mira Marshawn, the level 10? <laughs> no, 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 nine. I know we leveled up, but you nine. are not able no, to trick me no. like that. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to trick you. Tricky, tricky. I was tricking my own self. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I play Mira Marshawn, the level nine half elf bard. Animal ink jumped off of our skin. Animal <laughs> ink jumped off of our skin. Our tattoos rebelling. The full moon beacons. Animal ink jumped off of our skin. Oh no, we're in trial to sell all our best inventions for the Crow Cartel. Snow melts and we feel unwell, but our job's no good out here. That was amazing. Hell yeah. That, that was, was really probably amazing, one of the Sarah. best. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Sam, and I played the level nine human sorcerer Sarah Nepsenderman, soon to be the world renowned Grey Handler. <laughs> <laughs> Crow Cartel is going to be stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and last time on Trials and Trebuchets, the interns arrived in the industrious town of Troil, meeting quickly with Crow for an introductory brief on the town and the ongoing projects before receiving a welcome bundle upon arrival at their room. They got company iPhones. That night, under the light of a full moon, the intern's tattoos removed themselves from their flesh and fled into Troil at large to cause mischief or mayhem? We'll shall see. Shall we shall see? <laughs> we shall we'll see. shall see. <laughs> we'll shall see. <laughs> Episode she title. Sells, she sells by the she sore. <laughs> you all awake to uh, the frigid air within your rooms. And you might find yourselves under blankets, curled up in comfortable sleeping positions, but rest assured. It is cold in your bedrooms, your collective bedrooms, um, on your backs or arms or wherever, or necks, wherever you did have a tattoo. There is a sensitivity, which is poignant on this morning. What else is new? <laughs> yeah, Mira, this is not, you wake up and life is normal. It's a bit cold, but you don't really think twice about it. Um, but for the rest of you, you ex you know what your friend feels like for once in your fucking lives. Like, come on. Uh, have some fucking sympathy or empathy, whatever one fits. <laughs> when you do wake up, it, but it is frigid in the air um, to the point that it almost feels like there's a window that was kept open or some way the cold air from outside of Troil has crept into your rooms. It, it, it just it feels uncomfortably cold in here. Would you all, you all, please, uh, is there any morning ritual which you partake in before entering into the common area? Uh, perhaps checking on an unconscious girl s sleeping on the floor, uh, perhaps yes. uh, petting your pet, perhaps uh, unwrinkling your hat, a integrity, maybe some handstand push-ups. I don't know what you guys get up to in the morning. I was going to say, um, I think Sarah Neff would like do some like stretch at the, at the base of her bed. Mm -hmm. Just like, of course, got to limber up, got to limber up. <laughs> Perfect. The rest of you, anything of particular note before we enter the common area once more? Double checking that Kurt actually like got some sleep. Mm. Are you sharing a room with Kurt? Or does he have his own room? <laughs> I would imagine we're sharing yeah, a room. Again. <laughs> Winsler, Wallaby, you wake up and you see uh, at a little desk, 
Kurt or Lane. He has a weird contraption upon his head. It looks like two small, uh, what we would know as traffic cones made of brass that are like over his ears with like three headbands going over the top of his head. And he seems to be feverishly looking through some homemade uh, notes for the Gollum lecture, Winsler. His eyes red, his breath heavy. <laughs> I think it's a good safe to make the assumption that he probably didn't, in fact, sleep. That is, a or maybe only got very little. He seems to take zero notice of you getting up, though, and you can go about your day. Uh, Mira Marchand, I feel like yeah, you have something um, you'd like to get up to. Uh, yeah, I'll just be checking in on Angelica. I think basically, mm. like morning thing, you know, get up, stretch, get get my arm on and adjusted, mm-hmm. and then I will probably like just sort of tap Angelica on the shoulder and be like. Um, hi, Angelica. I hope you're doing okay. It's morning in Troil here. I hope that you are comfortable and everything. I gave you lots of pillows, and they were super careful with you. Ah, uh, you here. Please make a wisdom saving throw. You don't hear yeah. that, but that's me telling you to do that. <laughs> I can't you believe hear? Angelica told me to make a wisdom save. Make a wisdom save. I can't believe Angelica was secretly our DM this entire time. 12 plus nothing, so that's 12. Take eight psychic damage, and Ooh. you hear the words... Or you hear the sounds. Shh! I think that she can hear it. Hang on. Hear who? Who? Hear what? Are you? You're going to continue to communicate with her? Yeah, because Okey-dokey. that makes me nervous. Take six more psychic damage. Yeah. Don't walk into the room. Mirror's unconscious. Uh, we don't know how it happened. <laughs> she just knocked herself out. Uh, I just don't like to get up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is. It does feel like as though you've not gotten enough sleep, and this is not helping it, Mira, as your head starts to throb. Um, anyone observing this would see little wrinkles of pink, like almost like static, uh, running across Mira's forehead as as she tries to communicate in this way, and you hear Angelica answer back and say, "There's a voice calling out, and it it it's been saying, asking questions about you, and mentioning the things that we've been talking about here. So I think it can hear this." Mm. Angelica, what does the voice sound like? Don't tell it anything. Don't talk to it. Don't communicate with it. Just just, just try to ignore it. What, what does it sound like? Does it sound like a, 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 a empressy or snake-like? Okay. Or what? <laughs> okay. First, you, Mira, make a, or not make a saving throw. The way this works, just for your knowledge, in case this is kind uh-huh. of weird, is I'm making you make the saving throw until you fail it, and then you'll always be taking the full damage from that point makes forward sense, in the makes conversation. Sense, makes sense. Um, yeah. As for Angelica, I will be making an insight check for her to determine how it she views the voice as. Okay. The options were... Empressy or snake, <laughs> snake like yes, <laughs> <laughs> the two the two kinds of voices, the two genders. <laughs> <laughs> what a perfect dichotomy! Which um, friend are you? <laughs> <laughs> you receive no answer as contempl- contemplative science silence does follow for a few moments, and then Angelica decidedly will say snake like. Oh no. Okay, um, don't listen to anything it says. Do not come near it. If you if you hear anything coming near you, I need you to hide. Do not talk to it. Don't let it don't let it tell you anything. I need to go. I need to start my day. Um, but please stay safe. Don't listen to it. You hear a muffled, okay, okay. And take eleven psychic damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. How are you doing? Thirty three hit points. Oh, okay. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Uh, just burn through half of them casually in the morning. Uh, That's cool. So, and then and with this, I'll get ready to start my day. You get ready to start your day and exit into the common area. Integrity Idleberry, in your humble, small bunk room, what are you doing to start your morning? Right. Typically, I just wake up in the morning, uh, go for like a speed run around the room over and over again, do some push ups, mm-hmm. do like my 10 step face routine. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm ready to go about my day. Perfect. So we see in unison integrity with perfectly done skin in the morning, just absolutely resplendent uh mira with a furrowed brow and slightly like uh wearisome eyes uh winsler wallaby who got a wonderful night of sleep and saren up cinderman rocking her new look uh having done stretches and very limber you can tell you can look you see those muscles quite limbered up it's very obvious (laughs) the muscles became more obvious after all the housework (laughs) (laughs) when you all exit into this main common area a couple things are immediately obvious. 
One is the smashed apart table in the center of the room. Uh, the second is the ripped apart welcome baskets. If any of you left your welcome basket chocolate or toffee in in the general common room and not brought it into your actual bedroom, which, you know, feels like a reasonably normal thing to do to leave a big old basket out on the counter. It is the basket itself ripped apart and all the contents, or at least the toffee and chocolate, are gone. <gasps> Additionally... If you would like to look around more, you might make an investigation check as you take in the sights, or you can communicate with one another before doing so. Your choice. What happened out here? Integrity, like, we all got our own. You didn't have to eat mine. I did not touch yours. My Mine is gone too. Who did? Did you smash it? the table? Who did that? Fuck. Like, did anyone- okay, I, know I'm str- I know I'm strong, but I would not smash a table. Like, did you guys hear anything last night? Because I must have slept through this. I didn't hear a thing. I was, was it Kurt? Like, is- <laughs> yeah, where is Kurt? Uh, well, he's at the he's at the desk in our room still. I honestly don't think he left it all night. And if he did, no. he probably would have gone to bed. I don't know how true that is. Kurt probably did it. Uh, <laughs> I, would I like wouldn't think Kurt would do this. Sarah enough, what's up? <laughs> Sarah enough goes back into her room and checks on Virgil because he's a very big boy. <laughs> And I think that that would be like a mm, logical thing mm. of like, what did you, you do? Grab his little mouth, his little head, and look at it. No chocolate here. No toffee smears. The fur is clean. That He's rhymed. prim and proper. <laughs> I give him a kiss on the nose and I go back out to the main area. Um, he goes like, I, he makes a hedgehog noise like, <laughs> what does a hedgehog sound like? <laughs> um, I don't actually know. <laughs> uh, you give him a little kiss on the nose and proceed back out to the common area. If you want to investigate further, by all means, mm-hmm. tell me where you would like to look in the room. Uh, there's a, to describe it again because it's been a little while since we played, there's a kind of full uh, length window on one of the walls that overlooks the ice fields outside of the town. There's like these stone kind of uh, uh, reclining areas. There's the smashed up table. And then there's like cabinets, kitchen kind of area as well. And then the front door. What's up? What's up? Uh, well, you said that we felt colder than we should, right? Mm-hmm. Which makes me want to look at the window. Okay. Uh, so Mira's going to go and investigate the window. Go ahead and roll investigation check on that. If any of you would like to investigate any uh, other errors in this room, let me know. 11 going... plus 4, 15. Okay. Um, I want to investigate around like the table, um, like how it was broken. Was it like a tiny thing or a big thing um, that broke it apart? And that's a 15. 11 okay. plus 4. Um, yes. I would like to investigate the... The gift baskets, just to like, was there like f- anything like left over, like fur or anything like mm-hmm. that to kind of give an idea of like what might have happened? Perfect. And, and Winslow, is there anything? You uh, want to I am going to investigate with Mr. Wiggles. Uh, mm. We are going to check the floor to see if there's any sort of like perfect, like evidence of movement. Yes, perfect. All right. So 15 from Integrity and Amira, uh, Winslow and Sarenup, let me know, and then we'll go around and I'll tell you your uh-huh. findings. So that was a 17 in total. Oh, excellent. Mr. Wallaby. I got a 15. Wow. Oh, you... 15. 15 gang. 15 across the board and staring up, living up to expectations. Um, <laughs> okay. Mira Marchand, you walk over, uh, pulling your clothes a bit tighter around you maybe as the frigid air does grow stronger the closer you get to this window. As you walk up to it, you see that there is a... Have you ever seen a mirror that's kind of been warped? And so it looks like kind of wonky. As you look, like when you look at it, like your first impression is that looks kind of normal. But then as the light hits it in a way, you notice that this glass in front of you, uh, what Crow last night called living glass, uh, which is also what comprises the ceiling. You see that it is almost bowed or in some way warped in the center of the window. It doesn't seem that there are any holes, but it does seem quite a bit thinner than the rest of the edges of glass, if that makes sense. Interesting. As for you, Integrity Idleberry, you would like to poke around the table, yes? Yes. You walk up to this table. It had five legs, four in each corner, or one in each corner, and one supporting the center of it because it was quite large. Three of those legs have been utterly broken. It And from your understanding, just looking at it, it looks as if something put a lot of pressure on the top center of the table that just caused those legs to crack 
and snap and the table to collapse. It wasn't as if something came out here and just like ripped the legs off it. It looks like something very heavy fell on the table. And like something very heavy, like something very big or like tiny thing, strong impact. Hmm. Uh, large thing, large impact. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like good. as if someone took a bag of like... Uh, to give you the scale, there's a dent, let's say, in the top of this wooden table about the size of a large sack of potatoes in surface area Ooh, that okay. is just quite deep and seems to have just cracked those legs completely. Sounds good. Winsler Wallaby, you were investigating the floor. Mm -hmm. There seems to be in the stone floor underneath your feet and like the couple of... There's a, there was a rug underneath the, 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 the table that has just been like all but thrown into one of the walls and the floor around the table seems to have deep gouge marks in it as if uh, something sharp was just dug into the ground here to try to get some sort of uh, leverage or something like like the what you would see Winsler if you were dragging farm tools around like you probably did this as a kid drag farm tools in the house like a pitchfork and your mom yelled at you because it made deep gouges into the wood right something mm -hmm. like that but here in the stone there seems to be quite a few of them and you can collaborate with integrity to discover that those are also present on some sections of the table hmm. and finally Saren up Cinderman you walk over to these thrown, ripped apart baskets as if someone had the most heinous food craving on earth uh, during the night. You walk up to these and there is a sticky, sticky substance coating all of the baskets. Uh, your jackets are kind of in there or wherever you would like them to be. Uh, and the basket actually, material itself seems to be slick with this uh, dark, blackish purple uh, liquid. It's not sticky by any means, but it does just stain your hands when you touch it. Okay. An ink of a sort. Yeah. So I found ink. She's like rubbing it, like rubbing her fingers together like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is ink. That seems like a strange piece of evidence to be around everything else. Weird. Yeah. Did someone feel like writing a letter and wanting to eat all the chocolates because they're sad? Why would they come all the way here? I yeah, that doesn't really make any sense. Maybe they wrote Sorry, it on I'm the like table. Bad at investigating. Just like I didn't get a lot of sleep and like my arm really hurts, like where my tattoo is. So like, yeah. Oh, ouch. Actually, now that you mention it, my shoulder has been hurting and she like turns and kind of like, I imagine like right now she's wearing like a thick like t-shirt, like not like mm -hmm. the full get up for going out in the world, but like, and she yes. like pulls down the sleeve of her shirt and goes, is it like, in like, do you see anything wrong with it? Like, cause I don't think I got uh, scratch or anything. Here. As, like, yeah, Mira, as you look at Serenup's shoulder, where her tattoo was, tattoo of a fox was, you see the kind of, a almost what looks like a brand that you would put on a a, a farm animal, uh, like burnt into the skin, and it's just goose pimples or what are they called? Goose bumps underneath it, right? Just an outline of a fox tattoo. There's no ink there anymore, just that kind of raised, burnt looking flesh and goose pimples, goose bumps. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, what? Is there you didn't, like, get your tattoo removed, did you? Like, when you were back at home? No, I don't think my parents even know I had it. So that, we're in the clear there. It's not here. Wait. It's just, like, it's not there. I mean, it's not the kind of tattoo that sort of, like, goes expires after a certain amount of time. Is it one of those? <laughs> Serenip brings her hands up and examines her fingers. It's like, mm -hmm. um, does anyone remember what the moon cycle was last night? I don't keep track. Wasn't it a f full moon? Integrity Idaberry, with your keen mind, <laughs> you would very easily be able to tell that last night was a full moon. I Oh, I definitely know. It is a full moon. <laughs> okay. I mean, would that change anything? What about you okay, what about you two guys? Are you also having issues like with like your tattoos, like at all? I mean always, but like that's neither here nor there. And then I'm like gonna <laughs> yeah. roll up my sleeve. Yes. You see the same uh, partially finished uh, crow on a fucking uh, spiral uh, tattoo gone, replaced. It's it's particularly poignantly angry at you today because that kind of like burning feeling from your Shiora tattoo is not in playing very nicely with the burning feeling from the missing crow tattoo, uh, Mira. So 
Uh, okay, I think we should all check our tattoos because mm-hmm. mine is just not here either. Mm-hmm. Cause like, I mean, maybe maybe it's just like a like a special case, and oh my goodness, mine's gone too. <laughs> And Integrity Idleberry turns her neck. I pulled my turtleneck <laughs> down, and I'm like, what the heck? I paid so much for that. How is it gone already? Okay, so remember how the tattoo guy was like something about a full moon? and I don't remember all of it, but like something happens on a full moon. Right. I thought he was just being weird. She shows everyone the ink on her fingers. Like, I think our tattoos came to life. And they caused huh. this big of a mess? Well, yeah, they're I I can't explain that part. Like, but they're mm-hmm. not on us anymore. Well, like it's a fox. I, that kind of makes sense that a fox would. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe a fox. No, could dude, do just you, not do just yeah. a fox. Like you had a weird no, half no bird thing. Like, <laughs> no, I don't mean. I just mean like if it got big or something like that. Because of the size of it. Oh my god, there's a giant fox running around here. Yeah, we don't know like, exactly what the sizes of them are after, now that they're, like, off our persons. I mean, like, my tattoo wasn't huge. No. Like, it was, like... None of them were massive. We should probably go looking for them, because if they're causing problems in our room, mm-hmm. they might be causing problems in other parts of Troyal. I think you're that, right. That's a really good idea. I like, think I mean, we like, should Do we know that they're right not now. here anymore? Like... Uh, uh, hello? Tattoo? Are you are you around? Can you come back, please? I don't know if our tattoos can talk, though. <laughs> My neck misses you. <laughs> <laughs> you, Mira, don't hear any tattoos call back and return your plea to return. But you all do hear a very light knock, knock, knock on your front door. Uh, oh. Uh, one moment. I'm going to cast, um... I'm going to cast a spell real quick. Uh Uh, I think I'm going to cast like minor illusion to make it (laughs) seem like what's behind us or like that area is not in fact destroyed. Just a matte painting of of what it looked like. Like, uh, Okay. (laughs) Okay. Who would like like to open the door? I will open the door as the tallest person who will block the most view. (laughs) Serenup, you open the door and look out and you see nobody. And then you look down and see this like two and a half foot tall uh, gnome. Or I forgot. Let me take that one back, folks. Serenuff, you open the door and you look straight forwards and you see a small little stick sticking straight up in the air around to your eye line or if not higher with a very big orange safety flag on it and you follow the <laughs> stick all the way down into the top of a fur hat that a, a two and a half foot tall gnome is wearing he's wearing a very heavy coat with horizontal red stripes on it and he's wearing very thick very thick uh little mittens and he looks up with you with these sunken eyes this incredibly pale flesh there's a small, uh, like, five-inch diameter sphere of light that's floating next to him that casts this blue light across him and across you now, Serenep, and it just, like, fills you with a bit of unease as he looks at you, this this cool light washing over him, and he'll say, Now, good morning. Uh, good morning. This is the room that all the interns are staying in, right? I, I mean, I, I can tell because you... Decided to make your mark on the outside door here. I don't know if Mr. Crow told you you could do that. And he'll point Saren up to the door that you are holding open. And you can turn and look and see that carved very deeply into the wood is just very largely Mira Marchand. What? (laughs) (laughs) Mm, mm. Oh. I mean, as long as you fix it, I don't see any problems with it. But uh, as is... Don't go around doing that to things, okay? Understood. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> no problems. Uh, let me introduce myself. I was asked to come accompany you all uh, today, or uh, specifically uh, Mr. Orlane and Mr. Wallaby. Mm-hmm. Uh, the name is Oskool Parm. How do you spell that? O-S-G-O-O-L-P-A-R-M. Oskool Parm. Oskool. <laughs> That's a great name. My name is Osgul Parm. Parm. I've worked here in Troyal for uh, years and years. Well, it's wonderful to meet you, Osgul. My name is Sarah Oh, it's a pleasure Um, to meet you, Sarah Um, I will 
Uh, we're just getting ready for the morning, so if I can just sit in at the the the, the table and wait for the rest of you, I have some thing, uh, some reports oh. to look over, anyways. So it's well, no, um, not a big deal, anyways. We don't really have anywhere to go until later this, to, like in the afternoon, is when the Gollum lectures are supposed to start, and I don't know what the rest of you are supposed to be doing. I could point you in your directions and help you out this morning, just generally, uh, but just uh, let me in. I'll just take a um, seat and wait. Well, for you. Uh, we're. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to like <laughs> lean down and be like, um, mm. some of the people in our room don't do very well with new people. And oh, so we want to, they want to be around the people they're familiar with first and be ready to, you know, leave the space afterwards. So if you're okay, like we won't be too much longer, um, but we just want to make them as <laughs> as comfortable as possible. <laughs> make a deception check. I'm going to shout, is that a stranger? <laughs> <laughs> make a deception check. With right. it's okay. you, it's, I'm going to give you part inspiration is oh, what I'm going to do. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you can ro I'll roll a d8 and add that to your roll. Fair enough. Okay. Is that a stranger? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is a 12 plus 4, 16 plus 2, so 18. He looks at you very deadpan and says, that's completely normal around here, honestly. Uh, a lot of people hate people. It's about, like research. Yeah, the kind of person who goes to an Arctic town where you don't really have to interact with anyone and can just work on your own things, you'd be surprised the number of people who hate speaking to others. Uh, that's fine, then. I'll just sit on the stairs here and wait for all of you and sit here alone. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I close the door. <laughs> You close the door in his little gnomish face. Uh, he, you hear him sit down on the stairs outside. Okay, so Winsler, you have an escort to your seminar today. You and Kurt. Um. All right, I'll we... go. I can probably go get Kurt. Okay, we can see if he's like present. Yeah, that'd be that probably be a very good idea. Honestly, um, we can't let anyone see this room. <laughs> Right. Not until it gets uh, fixed, at least. Like, does anyone have any, like, spells for, like, fixing furniture? I got mending, but that's only, like, a little bit. Okay, um... I think I think the table might be a little wobbly. Uh... Well, if it's wobbly, it can just be, you know, a manufacturing issue. Oh, okay. Um, I think we should just do that now in case they have, like, mm. someone come in to, like, to clean I don't room. know, clean the room. Yeah, like, like just to come <laughs> in and, like, maybe clean the room. I haven't been in this situation before, so I'm guessing mm -hmm. here. Right. Winsler, if you'd like to spend a, a few moments, minutes, casting mending on the table and the deep gouge and, like, pull that rug back over and just generally yep. housekeep for a moment, you may by all means do so. Um, I will do that. What is it, any... what is it, yeah, what does it look like when Winsler mends stuff? Oh, so I just thought of this in my head right now, which I think is like really cute. So he basically like conjures like a mini like hammer and like a chisel <laughs> and it like ding, 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 ding. And it just, and it just like fixes everything. It back together. Even if the hammer doesn't make sense, just hitting the broken things with the hammer makes it go <laughs> and back, yep. fixing itself back. And, yeah, I perfect. Think while he's doing that, Serenep is trying to clean up like gift basket mess, like the, like the, the thrown aside of wrappers, course. easily that kind of stuff. Is there anything that Integrity or Mira or Serenep or anyone wants to plan, like to think about or brainstorm about a, a solution to the tattoos on the run, or is this just kind of be like hmm. a let's ignore that? Mm. I think it's just maybe keeping an eye out, at least for Serenep, like keeping an eye out. I for wonder stuff. does. My tat does my. I wonder if my tattoo would count as a creature because oh. I do have the mm -hmm. spell locate creature. Yeah. Huh. How does so? Do you have to be familiar with the creature? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Let me pull up the exact. I would love to hear it. Great. Uh, describe or name a creature that is familiar to you. You sense the direction of the creature's location as long as that creature is within a thousand feet of you. If the creature is moving, you know <laughs> the direction of its movement. Uh, the only exception is if running water at least ten feet wide blocks a direct path. Yes. This is okay. my favorite. The Caveat. favorite, the favorite, S Mira. If you would like to cast mm -hmm. this spell, I think that you are very familiar with your tattoo. Perfect. Um, I think that I'm going to be kind of in the living room while yeah. this is happening, and yes. I just thought of something. I'm playing some notes on my lyre, and the sound waves are vibrating in all directions when I play my note. But the sound waves in the direction that my creature is turn this bright, glowing light, mm. and 
Is that light visible, a path toward. Is that toward... visible for everyone, or is that for, just for you? Uh, let's say it's visible for all of us. I mean, okay. obviously, this is just flavor that I'm making up, so well, I don't know. Important but like, flavor. <laughs> of course, and lights a path toward my mm. tattoo. Perfect. You play these notes, and it bright green. You said. Uh, sure. Is that work? Did you have something else? In yeah. Okay. No, I didn't say a color. Okay. Bright green is perfect. Bright green, thus like a GPS path, uh, points you. Mira, hmm, not outside, like not out beyond Troil. It points at a location which you know to be very close by within Troil. And if you were to open the door a little smidgen and peek on out, you would see across this little uh, courtyard. So you are raised up in your current dorm position, and there are stairs down to those walkways that go around to the different workshops. And looking uh, kind of hmm, clockwise by like, l- let's say you're at, if for example, the exact top of the clock, if you were to look over at, say, 2 p.m. or 2 o'clock on the clock, there's a big glass ceilinged workshop there that you can see and there's lush plants and there's a lot of bookshelves that you can see and quite a few other things going on in there and your spell immediately pings in on that area, which is probably 400 feet away as the location of your tattoo. Okay. Um, I don't know if they're all there, but at least mine is over by that workshop. So if we can make our way over there, hopefully we can get these things under control. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's a wonderful idea. I hope we can get them under control sooner rather than later. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to go grab like a sack of bag or something. A sack of bag. Uh, a sack Wait, of no. bag. I'm, I'm going to go grab like... Um... <laughs> Like a pillowcase. Of course. Uh, and I'm going to just like put it, over put your shoulder. it on my shoulder. <laughs> totally, um, not su- totally not suspicious. Winsler? Yeah? Do you think you could get Kurt to have Osgool like show him around the other way just in case things go south? I could probably do that. Okay. Let me go see if he's up for such a task. Mm. Winsler me- Wallaby. Yeah. You walk into your shared, for some reason shared, room with Kurt or Lane. Everyone else has individual there rooms. There are only even, four rooms. He's even Mira, who's sharing a room with Angelica Lindman, only has one bed. But you, Kurt, and Winsler. I imagine have we have a bunk two, bed. You have a bunk Aww. bed. Absolutely scrumptious. You see Kurt sitting with his back to the door, those big old cones on his ears, who, and he seems to be continually flipping a page, scribbling up more notes, flipping a page, scribbling more notes. You walk up to him, and he still does not take any notice of you. Would you like to just grab his shoulder? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast Mage Hand, grab one of the cones, and then let go. Oh, so, so it slaps <laughs> into the side. Yeah. You pull the left side apart, and he like turns and looks at it for a second, and then you let it slap back into his head, and he like, ricochets out onto the floor and like <laughs> like writhes around in pain for like a moment, almost more shocked than anything. And he'll rip them off his head and look at you, Winsler. His eyes are bloodshot. His hair is just greasy and everywhere now that he's fallen onto the ground and he looks like a monstrous little creature staring at you on the ground (laughs) and he'll look up and you go Winsler (laughs) how could you do that to me I was in I was concentrating so much you might have broken them and he goes over to where he threw them on the ground and they are slightly uh, out of commission as he looks at them with sadness and he goes I worked for two weeks on these I had to get your attention it's clearly obvious to me that you didn't look like you slept one bit. I, that's not true. I slept an hour and I just woke up in a cold sweat and I, I thought I heard something happening and I was like, this place is such a town of industry that things are happening at all hours of the night. Oh. Slapped on my like headband of silence. All right, well. I had to start we're gonna, reviewing I'll, because I'm going to get your tangent right. later. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to, I'll get your tangent later. I need a favor real quick. Uh, something came up. Yeah. Um, me and my friends have to go do something in f- 400 feet away. 400 um, feet away? Yeah, we're just just across the pond, I guess, oh, across pond Troil. Uh, no, I, I don't know. Oh. Probably, it's probably frozen over and covered oh. in snow, but I don't know. Uh, I need you to go distract 
Do you think uh, we're over Osgul top for of a bit? this? Do you think we're over top of water right now, or do you oh. think there's land beneath us that is supporting the town, and then it just froze everything else? You know, I'll think about it when I'm walking over to the place that I have to go with my friends. So I need you to go distract Osgul for us. Who's um, Osgul? You said that name, a, and I don't know who it is, Winsler. Uh, like safety advisor, I guess. Okay. You'll be good friends, I'm sure. Okay. Um, I need you to go like. Take Strapped care of him, him for a little bit. Like, Take care of him. Make make him <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know. Face him the other direction for like I don't know an hour. Like talk to him. You want yes. me to talk to him? What is he like? What is he like? Does he is he gonna? Can I? And he like shakes his hand vigorously oh, at you in and points and he goes, "This is the time." If only my cones of silence weren't destroyed, I could show him those. If I hey Winslet, if I do you this favor, can you find someone to actually fix these really quick though? I'm not. Would, are you these just something that I could cast mending on by any chance? Does mending work on magic items or just mundane items? Probably not magic items. Just tell him to show him. It all says the an other object. Magic. Spell can physically repair a magic item, but it can't restore magic to okay. such an object. So as you look at it, Winslow, you go, you pick these, you snatch them out of Kurt's hand as he holds them up to you and look at them. It seems that there are some little copper wires coiled in here that those have snapped, but nothing overly ma- arcane has broken in them. So mending, you pull your little hammer from conjure space and just go whack, whack, whack <laughs> on the top of it. And the, the headphones chirp, or headphones, they're sound kids like headphones. The cones of silence. Uh, the cones of silence. <laughs> sm- me- meld, meld back together. The cones of silence meld back together, fixed once more. And Kurt looks at you. His eyes squint slightly. You can't tell if that's because he's about to fall asleep or, is, or he's thinking hard. And he goes, all right, I can distract Ozgul for like an hour or so. Thank you. I'm going to put these in his lap and I'm going to leave. Okay, perfect. See you later. Bye. And you then two seconds later, Windsor, as you run back into the common room, you hear Kurt open the door and go, what happened in here? Uh, <laughs> not a word. So the four of you have cleaned up, have grabbed a pillowcase to nab a tattoo, uh, have uh, located the tattoo, and have secured a... Uh, interference runner. Do you want to open the door and head on out? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Perfect. We're ready. You open the door and Osgul, this little gnome, turns his little head. You see the giant antenna safety flag on top of his hat wiggle waggle as he does so. And you'll go, oh, are you ready to go now? Well, we actually, me and I gesture to mm-hmm. um, Mira. Everyone at and large. T- Everyone yeah. except for Kurt because he's gonna, yeah, he has Kurt, to run interference. Kurt I was like, puts well, his jacket on and is standing at the back of the group behind you all. Well, we actually saw a spot yesterday that we kind of want to visit today, just for a little that bit. That sounds wonderful. I could take you there. Well, actually, oh, the thing is that um, no. Kurt had to talk to you. Yes, Kurt and, walks forward now yeah. and will say, I really wanted to talk to you, and I'm so excited to meet you, Osgul. I've been told your name's Osgul, and I really wanted to talk to you about, I brought a lot of things with me that I think have a lot of potential, and if we could, we can walk down here. And he begins <laughs> to walk with Kurt, and Osgul looks up and goes, wait, 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 the four of you are fine, though? Yep. Until this afternoon? Yes. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Wallaby, good. meet us outside of Workshop D, like in the afternoon sometime, Okay. All right. And try to be kind of on time because uh, Mr. Crow should be there as well. I am never tardy. That's Perfect. Why. We love to hear that here why in Troy. you that to us? Uh, anyways, Mr. Arlene, <laughs> tell me more about these delightful inventions that you have. And Kurt will go, okay. So are you ever in the middle of a very loud, industrious town and you can't sleep properly? And you hear them wander off, walk away, uh, talking about this. Uh, Kurt Orlane, a well-intentioned young man trying to sell this gnome his great inventions. I'm so happy he's off doing that because hopefully he won't bring that up later. I've never seen Kurt so charismatic. Uh... <laughs> and Is he always like this? As you all yes. also crowd outside of the room and close the door, Mira, you immediately see your name scrawled very large on the, the door outside. Oh yeah, also uh... um, that has to get fixed as well because Osgul was like... What the f- why you would my tattoo this? write my name? That's so... Oh God, that's embarrassing. Maybe it's an okay. homage. I don't know. <laughs> I guess. I mean... I wouldn't, like, tattoo my mom's name. Like, I mean, okay? At least you know okay. that this is where you sleep. There you go. I 
guess. None of us, none right. of us well, sleep here. It's just they're in over Europe. that way. <laughs> Wonderful. So the four of you uh, walk along cat take the stairs down to those catwalks and can move clockwise around Troil slightly. You go from your position above Warehouse C and uh, move past what looks like, at this time of day, there still isn't any light in the sky above. It still is pitch black with just stars and very heavy clouds. You see a full moon peeking out here and there. Um, So it feels like you really haven't slept that much at all because you went to sleep right before the moon came out and it's still really out there uh, and still very visible nonetheless you walk past what at this hour of the day the morning the the early day you don't really know uh you do see what looks like um sleeping quarters as you see regular crow workers leaving them kind of like groggy looking heading to their relative workstations in the snow uh this is the first time you've really seen people in that center courtyard section of troil there is still that like perfectly in the center a a kind of broken down cylindrical tower kind of like uh, religious looking structure no one's going into that or going anywhere near it for that matter not even giants who you do see wandering around up begin to approach it Uh, everyone seems to like circumnavigate the courtyard as opposed to cutting straight through the center to be close to that Uh, but that's just a minor thing you might notice and Hmm. as you uh, approach workshop b which is at like two o'clock on the clock you see that there is a side stair that says a lot of they like in very large runes in a language i don't think any of you speak or read which is giant no no okay uh, oh integrity idleberry uh but integrity does have like that feature mm-hmm. um from your for... warlock pack uh, devil's sight, eyes of the devil, or something. <laughs> <laughs> eyes of the rune keeper is is it is. Yeah, like it's called dark vision. You can read any language. It's just as you can read all writing. Dang. So dang integrity. Uh, the rest of you, you see these huge, just carved into the wall runes, and then below it, a wooden sign that has been nailed into the stone that says library, and there's an arrow. <laughs> Integrity, you read above it the giant speech, which says, a great hall of bookkeeping, um, <laughs> it, which, you know, maybe just a transliteration error. Uh, nonetheless, you can all go down this narrow staircase. As you walk down it, this is the first time that I think it's felt compact here in Troil. Even though there's small walkways uh, and small rooms, there's there most of the space is very open. It's very grand, as if it is built for people much, much larger than you. And things beyond your comprehension. That makes it sound a bit a grand, but just big-ass <laughs> shit is supposed to be moved in this town. And this hall, this stairwell, is very narrow. It's very short. It feels almost like a little secret that rats would use. And you might feel that way as you <laughs> scuttle on down it into the darkness below. Feels normal to me. And you come to a wonderfully opened and ornate doorway and beyond it you hear the uh, just general voices carrying uh, and you can see that you are about to or are entering this lush kind of almost greenhouse aesthetic uh, place. This is workshop or this is the offset shoot of workshop C which is the library. Or the, the the Great Hall of Books, bookkeeping, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as you enter in here, there are bookshelves that are probably 40 feet tall into the air. There's a great vaulted ceiling in here that has Ooh. rafters and giant lights hanging down from it. The lights grow uh, glow a brilliant orange from the fire within them. Uh, and you can see big old poles set to the side of the room where uh, human-sized uh, people uh, every single morning, they might even be doing this right now, take those poles and are like lighting the little torches up above in the high vaulted ceiling uh there's plants that are grand and lush and have no right existing this far north uh but seem to be absolutely thriving additionally the humidity in here which you assume mira is not good for the books this is not great (laughs) bookkeeping practices but it's very humid in here and the plants seem to be thriving within that uh the books maybe not so uh and in the middle of the room there is this large 
uh, apparatus or a set of apparatus, I should say. Uh, one looks to be a uh, printing press and the other looks to be a very oversized book press, like what you would use to bind books. Mm. Uh, it goes mm. from floor to ceiling and the surface area is immense as if this is to make books for giants, quite literally. You see? I wonder yeah, if what's this up? has anything to do this is just me as sarah yeah. thing the 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 book uh the book tree that that ava redding uh scene happened in and then this book themed greenhouse feel related to me and so i'm curious if there's a connection there that's fun that's fun if you wanted to well you have, you don't know i wasn't that. there yeah, that's a good point. i don't know i'm i'm just a saying great sarah. connection nonetheless sarah <laughs> um how inquisitive um <laughs> Perfect for the library. I'm going to get a good grade in D&D today. <laughs> <laughs> but as you all walk in, voices do carry. You see a couple of large giants who are standing here operating the book press itself and are in the current process of binding with, with almost what looks like to you spear-sized uh, needles to punch through these massive holes, punch massive holes in these pages and uh, bind these pages together, these small portfolios of a sort. Uh, and aside from those large giants doing that and having a small chat back and forth and giant and giggling in a way that giants giggle, which is to say like rocks crashing to the ground. Um, <laughs> closer at a small work table, almost like what, what would look like a foreman table or a supervisory table, uh, project lead table, you see uh, two people having a conversation. Uh, one of them is a elf dressed in uh, what you can see is quite high fashion, a very tight fitting uh, upper garments and very flowy long robes that almost look like a, uh, a flower in spring that's unfurling, right? Like a very green Ooh. top and like pink and purple, almost like petal like uh, skirt hanging down. Uh, and they are talking with a old human man that has a big gray bushy beard and the thickest glasses you've ever fucking seen in your life. Like almost an inch thick each lens is hung oh, together on the most dainty little frame, just these circular glasses. It makes his eyes look like it's just eight times the size they actually should be. Oh my uh, God. And as the two of you walk up, you hear the noble, the noble, that's just... Well, I that's gotta walk me. away. Bye, guys. That's just me assigning noble. elves to be a grand or something. You hear the elf, who has this, like, a very high high and tight kind of ponytail in their hair, and very long hair at that, and just very, like, sloped back, high cheekbones, squinting down at this uh, human man who seems to be, like, drawing something on a piece of paper, and the elf goes... If that's the way that we're going to go with this project, I, I don't know if we should be continuing into this endeavor together. If this is the kind of scenes you're imagining. Uh, my client is, their work evokes something. And this, this is piddly. This is, this, this is, no one would imagine this with their own, uh, with their own minds. This is kind of a scene. And you want to put this and make this the default for everyone to consume this book going forwards? Are you an idiot? Are you an imbecile? Do you know what you're doing here? And the human man kind of like runs his hand down through his beard and just looks it looks like he's been dealing with this a lot. And he makes oh. eye contact with the four of you and will call out and say, Oh, it seems that we have some guests here. Wonderful. Uh, Miss Abels, <laughs> please excuse me. I'm going to go uh, greet our new workers or wandering workers. Uh, you, the four of you, what are you doing in here? Can I help you? Hi. Uh, so we are actually here. Well, some of us are actually here to help with the project. Mm. We're interns, but we're also looking for... Uh, did you happen to see anybody come this way? Uh, we're looking for our pets. Mira, when you say interns, you see this elf, Miss Abels, uh, presumably, go, interns! Like, scowling at that, almost like vomiting the word wow. from her system. Uh, the uh, worker will scratch his beard. He, he's a stout kind of man. He has a gray beard and very, like, a, a buzzed head. Um, and he'll stroke his beard and say, pets. Now, excuse my ignorance, but why would your pets be roaming around the town, specifically into uh, project areas and the like? Uh, that's 
concerning. Did they get out? Is everything, should we call yeah. the gatekeeper, the kennel keeper, whatever his name is, oh, to come get them? No, there's there's no need. They're, they're magical pets uh, made of ink. That's even more and... troubling. You understand, well, they, yes? Yeah, we're just looking for them and mm. we don't want to cause a scene. Uh, we just want to bring them back to our room and uh, they can just relax in there. Ink? And so we just want to get wait. it done very quickly. Did you see made of ink? Yeah. Um. Now this might be a strange question. We don't have that many interns here, uh, but I don't know everyone's names around town. Oh, no. Would one of you, by chance, be Mira Marchand? Oh, my God. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, <clears throat> this I isn't funny. I am so sorry. I, am, Shh, I don't hush, know why they do that. Stop. And he shakes his head at you very quickly and will rush towards you. Make a perception check. All of you can make a perception okay. check. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> He runs oh, at yes. us. He runs at you. He gets this up and how we sprints die. towards you all. Eight. Eight. Yeah. Twelve. So that's fourteen. Six. Oh, uh, damn. Perception? Yes. Fourteen plus eight. Twenty-two. Damn. Okay. Um, Serenepth and Winsler. You got a fourteen and a what? Six. Oh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Mira and Winsler. You notice that a man is sprinting at you full fucking force. He's an older man, probably in his late 50s, but he is hustling toward you. Oh you, my hear, God. you hear the snap, crack, pop of his bones, his knees, as he runs at you both, or as runs at the group of you and kind of like tries to corral you away and like bring you off into like a different corner. Uh, and he'll kind of look over his shoulder and say, just helping the interns find some work to do. Just go this way, this way, this way, all of you, quickly. Um, Serenepth. You noticed that when he said, or does one of you happen to be named Mira Marchand? The elven woman, kind of her eyes flung to him with a fury behind them. Oh, no. And Integrity Idleberry, you can see discarded off in the back of this room like a piece of trash. There is a large, what looks like fairly complete version of one of these books that the giants are working on that is completely covered from the front cover all along the sides, scratched in with Mira Marchand, Mira Marchand, Mira Marchand. It's just Uh scratched into it. Almost like they had a fully finished project and then it was ripped to shreds with by a vandal. Uh, this, this, This worker, this project manager will pull you all over to the corner. He takes his glasses off now. His eyes are so much smaller. They're like small and kind of thin as he looks at you all. He goes, thank you for fessing up to it. Uh, it's We're at a very uh, precarious position here with this project. We had a fairly complete proof of concept completed uh, in the night sometime. And when we showed up this morning, it had been vandalized with your name all over it. So now, Miss Abels, the publishing agent for our uh, this contract, is threatening to find another means of production. Um, so uh, thank you for your honesty. I am so sorry. Wait, it wasn't you, me. It was... it was your pet. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do not know why it did that. I am so sorry. Uh, we did a magical spell mm. and we tracked it here. Um... I, I would love to help. It's so it's um, still in the building? Uh, yes. Okay. And so I would really like to get it under control. Yes. Uh, there's, I think, three or four more of these guys. Mm. And if mine's causing problems, mm. they're all probably causing problems too. So, uh, so we just want to get it. I would but we, I would be happy to help with your book thing after. I love books. Um, so I really want to get this dealt with. But uh, did you happen to see where something like that might have gone? Or was there any other vandalism anywhere else in the building? He looks... He's He has a paler which has crossed over his face as you explain this conundrum, and he'll go, so from the beginning, no, I haven't, no- or from whatever, I, I haven't noticed any other vandalism aside from the book, though, granted, that has occupied my waking hours for the day, I haven't exactly gone looking. I haven't noticed any creatures lingering around. There's hate and bait back there. I don't know if they saw anything. And he gestures to the two giants working the book press. And he goes, "I they might have seen something. Um, especially if it's a small thing, it might be lurking in the plants somewhere. What might be best if there are other creatures, other pets, and he looks at the rest of you with a very like uh, diplomatic kind of expression. He'll go, if there's other pets uh, around the town, it might be best to go and let 
Mr. Crow know that this is going on. We could bring in the kennel keeper and the greys. We could sniff them out and get rid of them in some very, it could be very quick and easy. I mean, I'm going to work with the greys anyway, so that might be the good, good next step. Yes. Um, if you say it is in here, then we need to immediately shut down production of anything in here because this is in a very, uh, as I said, uh, difficult position. Uh, and I think any further complications, if we were to complete this or have further vandalization of our products, you understand that that, that would look quite terrible for, for us. And, and he looks at you, Mira, now specifically and goes, and me specifically. This is my project after all. If we lose this, that's me and that's on my head. So what are we looking for? Tell me. Fill me in on all the details. Quietly, though. Please and quiet. Um, I think it's going to look like a bird made of ink, uh, like a crow. Imagine a drawing of a paper crow done with ink. And this is your pet. <laughs> well, that's the best way I could describe it right now, yes. They were originally uh, tattoos. Yeah, so. but right now we're kind of needing to tell them what to do and like hopefully get them under is control because... Is I, I hate to ask this, but is this a joke? This isn't no, a practical no. joke, right? No. It's not a joke. Not a joke. Definitely not. No. No. Uh, some I, weird guy, like, came to our thing and, like, we uh, we got pressured into getting tattoos. S- like, swear to goodness, not joking. Look into my eyes. Make I a persuasion check. Um, I okay. turn and I and I bring down the shoulder of my shirt to show mm. the the make marking on my with, back. Make it with advantage, since Sarah has tangible proof. Uh, seventeen and nine. Seventeen plus nine. Twenty six. He I don't believe you. <laughs> shakes his head and he goes, <sighs> "On any other day, I would have believed that I if uh, if you told me this was a prank from Mr. Glass, I would have." Dear, I would have loved to believe you that this was all just some uh, jest and everything was fine. But if it is as serious as you say, pets are escaped within the town and are rampaging through our projects. Okay, so we'll shut down production now. Uh, I will go get the book press workers. I don't know how to communicate this to Miss Abels, however. Um... Communication. Mm. My name is. I haven't introduced myself at all. My name is uh, Mr. Hannigan. I'm in charge of this project as a formality, and thank you for your help on it. And he says that quite loudly, as if to continue fooling everyone into this ruse. And he'll go, um, if someone could go and tell Miss Abel's something, get her out of this room so that we can shut down the production, lock the doors, and begin the search, that would be the best thing you could do for me right now today. Is that possible? Mm, we could chase her s- out of here. I'm gonna no, start pa- don't <laughs> do that one. I would um, like you to find is- a way to get her out of here that will maintain the client. Think of this as just a, me- a moment of your internship. Maintain our client relationship and also obs- obfuscate the fact that we are having technical, ongoing technical difficulties that are the result of escaped pets in the town. Mm. Is there like um, like a restaurant or like a canteen nearby? Exactly. Maybe we can be like, we are so sorry for the inconvenience. We can like take you for a drink that we are offering to you at, while we get things sorted and we want to give you that opportunity. Maybe something like that? Uh, there is the mess hall. I don't know if she would stoop that low. You would be surrounded by the other mm. general workers. The only other, probably... the only nice place in town that I can think of would be Crow's Study. He, he, it's quite nice place. We go there for the reviews and such things. I'm, you might have had your orientation uh, talk there, but it's that that place is beautiful. I think that's it, it fit to someone of her caliber. But that's not a, that's not an option for us because that's uh, Mr. Crow's, of course. We could also probably set up a courtyard lunch, maybe a high tea. Yeah, that's. I'll leave it to the four of you. But an apology tea that makes it sound like we're not just trying to get her out of here, but it's a special thing that we put together. An apology. Yes, it's a quality control. You're Sometimes so smart. It, the, the new generation makes me so. The words escape me. <laughs> you know? I'll leave it in Thank your hands, you. though. And he will put his glasses back on, clear his throat, bristle up his like work shirt, his like kind of off what cream like shirt, and. 
walk very quickly past Miss Abel's towards those two giants and begin talking to them in some very like quick paced giant it, this grating language the four of you have a fun task how would you like to maintain the client relationship hmm i think as like a quick montage of like one of us goes to make the drinks one of us scouts out a nice area to sit mm-hmm. in <laughs> Mm-hmm. <gasps> two of us talk to the client yes. to like be like super friendly and welcoming and stuff and then like you know bring her of out of course. there okay so i could animate some utensils to set itself up as like a picnic what outside. if they were like little servers and like <laughs> oh, the, like brought the tea and there was like a living like be our guest yes! yeah they're literally literally they will pour themselves a drink <laughs> this is perfect this is perfect this is what we can do winsler goes and fetches a bunch of cutlery from mess hall you run in there's people eating breakfast here and yelling at each other and just having a rowdy little time you you and you look at their plates winsler as you just start screaming grounding up as much cutlery you can get before one of the chefs goes, hey, hey, get out of here! Uh, and just <laughs> yells, just barks at you as you, like, steal a bunch of cutlery. Uh, Mental, you see plate upon plate upon plate upon plate of, like, brown stew. And it just, oh. it just, the, the entire mess hall smells of stew and bubbly stew. Uh, not particularly poignant stew, but st- brown, gooey, gravy like stew uh nonetheless you can grab all right your, so grab all your stuff and run as, back out of the as as part of that as yes. they will prepare to animate them i will have them like line up and i'm going to cast like prestidigitation on them yes. to clean them yes perfect one by can one can prestidigitation like make things taste better too oh <laughs> it could yeah wow. some, some maybe shit like that um <laughs> so this is in the general troyal courtyard if i'm to be believed yeah, Where? just like one of the so, nicer yeah. ones. Was, is there anywhere specific in the courtyard you want to be? Or the general, or like the, I think the, cor- the courtyard does a disservice. The ta- interior, the interior, the field, the quad, the quad works. The quad, let's use the quad. That's a good word we don't use that much. Was there anywhere in the Troil quad specifically, Winsler, that you want to set it up? What I mean here is how close to that center tower do you want to be? Uh, Judging by the fact that everyone seems to be avoiding it, Mm. We could probably just do like right on the edge. Okay, so close by to the actual, uh, yeah, library that you were working in. Close enough that it's like Wonderful. out of the way, but it's still nearby. Okay, so Winsler gets the table set, and, and presumably with Serenup's help, I I would assume. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Integrity Adelberry, are you in charge of getting the food, or rather, tea in that case? Uh, yes. How do you procure such a thing in a town like this? Oh boy. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So it seems like there is like no tea store or anything. There's no. Um... There are what looks like old giant stores that the doors and windows to which have been boarded shut, or are rather stoned shut with okay. stones and mortar. Okay. So it seems like I don't want to like break in into those because this is seem like that would be illegal. Um. I'm thinking I could procure some herbs and mm. flowers. From around the library. Yes. Oh, give me a nature check, please. Nature or survival to know what is good and what is not. Mm, let's go with nature. Okay. Wonderful. That is an 18 plus a 2. Oh, wonderful. Uh, wait, 18 plus 4. Oh. Sorry, nature, nature is plus 4. Wonderful. So a 22. I don't know why I said plus 2. Okay. Integrity, you rush around this little library collecting herbs and what aromatics, things to toss into a small teapot and make a nice little apollo tea, <laughs> which you can then bring outside to Winsler and Serenup, who are waiting, setting up. You see a little, like flanking little cutleries who are there to uh, present the guests with their everything. Can I also have gotten like some flowers to put in the middle? You of know, course. what do the flowers look like? Ooh, I would like to grab some mix of lavenders mm. and um, like just basically like purple and white ah, yes. flowers. Mm. Wonderful. You do so. You make a wonderful centerpiece. Mira Marchand. I imagine I'm doing the inviting. That's because, what my impression like, was. This woman is an elf. I feel like I can invite her in elvish. She might feel more comfortable and she might feel a little bit more like, mm. I'm, you know, I'm talking to you one-on-one Perfect. here. You so, walk up to her. What's your approach? Um, 
Hi, Mrs. Abels. It's very nice to meet you. I'm obviously saying this in Elvish. Yes. My name is Mira Marchand. I'm an intern, a student mm. at Wildcliffe, mm. and an attendant for Ala Algrim. Um, on behalf of everybody here, we are very, very sorry for the inconvenience. We want to get everything sorted, but we would also like to make sure that you have a nice time here in Troyle. We've set up a high tea out in the courtyard, and we'd like to invite you there. I think you'll find it very amenable. She she puts her hand on her cheek, almost gasping when you say you're an attendant to the Lady of the Woods. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then we'll mm-hmm. stick her hand out, limp, a flaccid hand, and we'll say, <laughs> Enchanté, my name is Art Abels. It's so nice to meet you. Mm. She wants you to shake her hand. It's a pleasure. Hands, yeah. I, I'm going to kiss her oh, hand. Oh, wow. Wow. Not in like, I'm not in a way that I'm like flirting with her, just in the way like, that I'm I kissing can't believe It's only been a couple yes. of weeks. Oh, my God. No, no. I'm not like. <laughs> as not soon as Dallas is. isn't around. <laughs> no. Wow. I just, I'm being very, um. <laughs> Proper. Blonde elves with big noses. Mira oh has God. a type. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Make a persuasion check with advantage he due to all your. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got fucking advantage because. <laughs> oh. First roll was a one. Yikes. Second roll was a nineteen. Oh, oh my uh, goodness. So, uh, twenty-eight. Oh my gosh. She'll retract her hand after you've kissed it and will kind of link arms with you. Not, again, in a romantic way, but in a way of like, she'll say, so go ahead and lead me then. Of course. And I will bring her to the courtyard. How did a girl your age manage to come under the supervisory of the Lady of the Woods? Oh, well, actually, she was visiting the school where I study, and she was very impressed with my knowledge about the history and architecture at Wildcliffe, and that's how I came to be in her service. We find that such a scrumptious set of skills. I represent Knightly Publishing House. You might have heard of us. Have I? Oh, Mira. Oh, Mira. Is this the publishing house? (laughs) This is the publishing house. It's the publishing house. For your childhood and maybe current. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mira, I think, kind of just starts vibrating a little bit. (laughs) And she's like, oh, yes. Nightly Publishing House, I'm very familiar. Hmm. Everyone is, of course. Of course. Of course. But such a skill set. I remember when I was a young girl that uh, I was approached due to my uh, just rampant knowledge of history and my keen eyes going across things. I don't quite work in editorials anymore, although I did dabble in a few newspapers as a teen. Uh, But nowadays it's more... uh, making sure contracts are fulfilled, such things. Uh, I'm not a fan of the work so much. It's more dealing with idiots, imbeciles, she yells as you two exit the library, (laughs) Uh, like Mr. Hannigan, of course. Of course, that must be exhausting. Mm, Just idiotic. Uh, To to even be able to not stop someone from uh, vandalizing or just, I, can I be honest with you? As you two walk. Of course. I think that they didn't make a single advancement since the last time they updated us and that they purposefully destroyed this one to extend the deadline for when we need the book. You must feel so upset and I completely understand it. I hope some of this tea calms your nerves because I do not blame you at all. (laughs) Well, it wouldn't be my fault. So why would you blame me? Of course. Uh, of and course. Mira, you lead her out to the rest of your friends. I think as like we're about to say goodbye, I'm like, may I ask you one question? Of course. Just the one, though. Any more and I'll... I don't know what I would do. Okay. Is the Lost Diane Dangerous book Curse of the Emerald Emerald real? Or is <laughs> it just an urban legend? She will take her seat and grab one of these wonderfully prepared tea cups. I assume, actually, there might only... It, uh, explain. Are all of you to sit here with her and have tea, or is she going to sit here and be served by the little forks and plates and stuff alone? I wasn't planning on staying with her, okay. I don't know how she would feel uh, yeah, with I me, and her, with it on me and her presence. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, She's meant to be, I think, uh, impressed by the magical. Of course, of course. And you've sat her facing away from the library, looking away (laughs) into the rest of Troyal. And she'll sit down and pick up her tea and look at you, Mira Marchand, and say, if you promise to keep it between us, 
pinky promise, I say, which is funny because, you know. Huh? That's how you get out of it. I see. Smart. It's true. There's a single copy still in existence <gasps> at the publishing house itself. Oh. The plan is to release an illusory edition of it later this year. <gasps> But we might have no. to extend that to next year if Chrome Mercantile can't keep its contractual obligations. I will make sure that we do everything in our power to get that dealt with. Thank you so much for telling me. I hope you have an excellent tea. Thank you, dear. Have a great time here. I hope that you can exercise your powers to move mountains. Mm -hmm. And she will <laughs> cross her leg and sit here and drink some tea as the rest of you can reconvene and head back to the libraries. Is there anything you discuss as you do so? Integrity. Integrity. What? You, you read the Alyssa Adventure books, right? Y yes. It's real. Curse of the Emerald Emerald is real. They're releasing Curse of the Emerald Emerald. Well, I thought that that wasn't... Uh, wait, what? For real? I thought that was not real. No, it's real. She just told me. <gasps> You're allowed to tell me this, yes? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are y'all talking about? Nothing! <laughs> Mira, okay. like, tw tw her full body twitches. Um, <laughs> um, so you all can re-enter the library. As you walk down and walk in, Mr. Hannigan is standing by the door, and as soon as you enter, he will close it and slide a long iron bar across it, locking the door to the library. He'll clear his throat and say, Expertly done. The four of you, great job. And look over at her through the glass and say, that'll keep her distracted, I think, for about 20 minutes. I've sent the okay. giants away. I spoke to them. They hadn't seen a hide nor hair of any pets, ink or otherwise. We try to keep the library free of animals as at, at large. Uh, they've been a problem eating the books in the past. We're looking for a small bird. Yes. Okay. Uh, but you might also see, um, like, a fox or any other animal. Those are maybe around two. Mm, okay. How about we split up, the four, five of us, mm -hmm. and search the library? There is a staircase, uh, and he'll walk over to one of the bookshelves and pull on a book and then take a very big step back, and you can all see the bookshelf begin to pull forwards jaggedly as a staircase emerges a secret staircase from the bookshelves emerges Ooh. and it seems to go up to like the rafters area and you'll say Ooh. i would suggest one or two of you two of you for safety sake this is a workplace after all and make sure to strap yourself in there's a safety rail up there tie into it we don't want any injuries okay but let's take the next 20 minutes while miss abels is distracted and search the entire workshop okay all right mm -hmm. um i'm going to like uh nudge on like nudge inside my pocket to mm -hmm. like get ida out yes and i'm going to um uh put her on my arm mm -hmm. and be like uh hey mira uh-huh do you mind handing me your arm for a quick second just in case it's only your tattoo that's here um, yeah, sure. And I'll stick my left arm out. <laughs> okay, Ida, go smell her arm. Make an animal handling check for I me. I'm training Ida to be a canine. <laughs> <laughs> Just sent out. That is a... You said animal handling? Yes. That is a 12. Ah, uh, you see... So, Mira, you stick your left arm out, and Ida plops forwards and just sticks her little squirrely hands and, like, takes a big whiff of your forearm and then, like, tries to go in for a second whiff and readjusts her foot or her hands and just fully stomps in on your tattoo, the Shiora tattoo, and just, like, presses. It feels like your brain's on fire. Ow! Ida! Oh, I'm and so Ida, sorry. And Ida falls to the ground as Mira pulls her arm back and just looks afraid and will look up at you, Integrity, and scurry off. And start climbing. Why did up. She oh, do no. that? Are you okay? No. Ow. Okay. Where Where did she go? Jeez. Yeah. You see her scurry off into the bookshelves and climb quickly and vanish from sight. Integrity. You've now lost your your tattoo pet from your neck and your pet pet. <laughs> I oh, did no. not anticipate that. I'm so sorry. I've been training her to like smell and search for stuff. I don't know what happened. I'm so so sorry. Should we follow where she went? Is that why she was chasing me around the house? Uh, I, th 
hope she'll find me. I, 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 I taught her how to find me. So my hope is that she remembers that at least. Okay. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, maybe we should keep on the lookout for like any damage. Mm. So tell me where you would like to investigate here in this library, folks, this greenhouse library. I would like to investigate the second floor because mm. if it's a bird and animals that can climb up things, then most likely we'll be up there. Wonderful. What about the rest of you? Is Who is accompanying Sarah Neff? Who will be Sarah Neff's safety buddy? I can help Sarah Neff. <laughs> Wonderful. So the two of you begin to climb this bookshelf staircase. And as you climb up, you climb 20, 25, 30, 35, finally 40 feet. You're well in the air. There's a brass, uh, or let's say, actually, there is an iron safety rail that you can uh, tie a rope around your own waist and tie to that in case you fall. It'll hold you there, and you can spend a couple moments doing that integrity, uh, expertly tying uh, the the knots around you and your cousin's waist, and then the two of you can proceed. Uh, it's, so the way that this second floor, as it says, works is that you are up in the essentially rafters of the building. Uh, some Some plants, at the very least, have the very top canopy up here like two or three trees that are actually growing in here or maybe just shrubs that have overgrown their purpose in life find themselves up here um and you kind of like push aside those leaves and big branches as you uh investigate the rafters give me investigation checks from both of you and in the meantime winsler and mira where are you two looking for hmm Mm. Where should we go? I was thinking maybe in like the back corner somewhere. Mm, mm. Okay. That's like smart. In the darkness of the foliage, uh, like little jungle explorers. That I seems guess, like yeah. Ink would ha- yeah, we're, we're doing our own die in danger yeah. moment. <laughs> uh, in that case, the two of you can give me either investigation or, if this fits your fancy, nature checks to see, like, mm. looking where, like, do you know where birds would want to be in a verdant little greenhouse? I think investigation better fits my fancy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By which I mean I'm proficient in it. <laughs> ah! Another fucking four! Plus four! <laughs> oh my god. Eight! I hate this! Die! I got 12. Total? Yeah. Um, I got a 16. Okay. I got a 17. Okay. Nice. Oof. Winsler and Mira. Mira, you are too overwhelmed with how similar this is to Diane Danger premises that exist. Um, and, and the little thought that creeps into the back of your head, which is, we are unsupervised in here, largely. And the book over there is just the lost, the rumored Diane Danger book. Mm-hmm. I could just go peek. I could just go take a little peek. And you follow, it's true. and it's you true. and Winsler, uh, rummage into this back corner, uh, mulch on your piling over your shoes and into like your socks uh, and just generally the moistness getting to you. Uh, It feels as though you've entered into a deep, deep jungle of sorts, but then you hit some glass and you realize that that is not the case. You look around and you see scratched into the tree tree trunks around you and like the leaves here in the dark back corner, Mira Marchand, Mira Marchand, Mira Marchand, and one on a big leaf, there's a big, what looks like claw slash or claw print and then Mira Marchand was here. Um, oh my god. I was oh my not. God. I was not here. Me? I'm gonna like yeah. pluck that leaf and like <laughs> shove it into my pocket. Of course. <laughs> Meanwhile, we, we see that like you pluck it and then like the, you angrily swish it into your pocket and like the swish is if this was a television show that would be like a weird like uh, Star Wars style swish transition to the <laughs> top floor as Serenup pulls back one of the plants uh, and the two of you with a 17 and 16 walk along this rafter space uh, calmly and carefully so as not to alert any potential little inky creatures that you are onto their case. And as you're walking, holding onto your ropes or holding onto the safety rail and looking around, you see that in the center rafter that hangs over, you're on the edge of the room, and there's a center rafter that goes the length of this kind of glass arch here. There is a... It's hard to see, especially in the dim light. It's a almost two-dimensional crow-looking thing. 
Like as if someone took a painting and just cut out all the white space or as if someone pulled a tattoo off someone's skin mm. and just stretched it so that it was even in a kind of stooped crow position with its wings folded in and neck hunched looking down with like evil in its little inky eyes. <laughs> it's probably still like eight feet ish. It's substantially sized and it just is sitting here still as can be i'm gonna nudge at serena mm -hmm. and be like do you see what i see yeah how did he how did he get so big oh uh, i don't know okay we found one i don't think that's gonna fit in your pillowcase <laughs> we're gonna need a bigger pillowcase <laughs> stitch all the pillowcases together. <laughs> there we go giant pillowcase wait how big is it again uh You've seen crows sitting in like parking lots eating like pieces of pizza, right, Carla? Yes. <laughs> and they're like hunched over, like kind of compact crow size. Yes. It's in that posture. It's not eating a piece of pizza, to be clear, but it is compact <laughs> and it is still like eight feet from tail to head, I would say. Um, so, what do you think we can do? It seems to be moving and looking down. Uh, with, again, evil in its little inky eyes. I... And this is another very important note. This is a very important note. It seems to, when it moves, almost wibble and wobble a little bit, and then you see the part that's not finished, and so it doesn't have the structural integrity to move as fast as it would like to move, <laughs> and seems to be a bit wibbly, almost like it's limping with its left leg slightly. Woo -woo. Um... What do you do? Because it looks like it's, it's about to do something. I... <laughs> Can I do, I... like, an arcana check on it to, like, understand exactly what is causing this mm. and if there might... Absolutely. Make an arcana like... check, Sarah. Thank you. While, while Sarah is doing this, I'm going to talk to... I'm going to be talking to Sarah and be like, what if I put it on its head? The bag? Then it won't see where it's going. <laughs> Pillowcase? Um, I got a 22 and I'm going to respond to my cousin with, I mean, maybe that might work, but then it's just going to, like... Stain the inside mm. of your pillowcase. Serenup, you say that, and you examine it with an arcane perspective, now having your eyes firmly on the subject at hand, and the thing that catches your eyes is the glimmering, glittering light from above as the full moon glows down on this bird, and you almost see it as the more the longer it sits here in this full moon light the inch or millimeter by millimeter it seems to be growing okay and as you do uh -oh. both sit here and plan to hit it with the pillowcase attack you hear a silent almost silent unfurling of the winds of the wings and then you see it swoop down below and all of you hear screams as Mr. Hannigan, as M M Mira and Winsler you turn her over, over and look over your shoulders through the brush and see a large crow swoop down and in its talons grab Mr. Hannigan, this human, oh. and just pick him up and begin to crush him. And the the <gasps> crow just what? Cry, throws its head back and oh cries God. loudly. Or whatever crows will say. And we'll deal with that next time on Trials. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Is he dead? Yeah. Sarah, can you do an outro? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Mira Marchand, Mira Marchand. Mira Marchand, was here, carved and into his dead body. this is why you don't get tattoos, <laughs> kids. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Trials and Trebuchets. I know I did, and if you did too, please leave us a rating or a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher app you use. We read every single one. They really mean the world to us and help us out so much. Um, if you would like to see teasers, fan art, maps, and other exclusive content, you can check us out on Instagram or Twitter at Trials and Trebuchets. We also have a Discord server where you can share fan art, fanfic, talk about the podcast with listeners and us, and just have a generally cool and chill time. Yeah. And you can find the link to that in the episode descriptions for this podcast. Um, for those of you who want to be extra generous and give us that little bit of extra support, there are two ways you can do that. The first is Patreon at patreon.com slash 
You guessed it, Trials and Shrubs. <laughs> and what you can do there is make your own student NPC, see blooper mm-hmm. reels, vote on bonus episodes, and get early access to them, yep. and lots of other super cool rewards. It really helps us keep the lights on, uh, just really means the world to us and really supports us. Yeah. Uh, finally, should you, you know, Nesca briefly came up in this episode, <laughs> the best character in the history of this podcast, but what if you want Nesca on your shirt? Yes. <gasps> well, you're in luck, because we have merch at... Trap merch. Trap merch. Trap we have this really cool like Nesca Ascend mm-hmm. shirt. We've got these stickers of yeah. various trials and trebuchets related artistic pursuits that are very cool. Thank you all so much. And I hope you enjoy hearing from us next week. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you everyone for listening. Bye. 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 Goodbye to your ears. <laughs> Goodbye ears. <laughs>